I realized I have not filmed a sewing tutorial in a while, so I decided to record this simple demonstration on how to make your very own adorable Victorian or 19th century apron. While a lot of this tutorial can be done on a machine, this video will show you how to construct it using just hand sewing, so there is no machine needed. There are certain parts, such as the cartridge pleats, which need to be made by hand even if you choose to use a machine for the rest. For this tutorial, you'll need to know the basting stitch, the back stitch, the whip stitch, and the felling stitch all of which I teach in my 7 Essential Historical Hand Sewing Stitches video. So if you are unfamiliar with any of these, I've linked the video in the cards. I didn't use a pattern for this apron, rather I made up my own design by looking at a few photos of extants from the Met. These three examples specifically were the ones that inspired me. While I chose to keep my own apron extremely simple and straightforward, just know that this design can be built upon and you can add as much extra decoration as desired. For example, you could add insertion lace or a ruffle at the bottom. You could also add some embroidery. I could not quite tell what the closure was like for these two examples, so I based my own apron's closure on this third photo. In all, this apron took around 7 hours to hand sew, and that was with filming, which makes the process longer. For that reason, this makes for a wonderful day project, or if you'd like to have something quick to construct during a spare evening. The supplies required for this project are really quite straightforward. You're going to need a tape measure, fabric cutting scissors, smaller embroidery scissors, dress pins, a pencil or marking tool, two sewing needles, a thimble, two hooks and two eyes, silk or another high quality strong sewing thread, and a basting thread. I like to use bright contrasting colors for my basting thread because then it makes it easy to remove later. And of course, you're going to need your fabric. You will need about three quarters to one and a half meters of 45 inch to 60 inch width fabric of your choosing. The amount will vary depending on how long you want your apron to be and how tall you are. On my own short frame from natural waist to knee, I only needed about three quarters of a meter of fabric. I am five foot three inches for reference. The width should be the typical width that your fabric already comes in, but the wider your fabric naturally is, the more voluminous the pleats will end up. I opted for a handkerchief weight linen, but your own project does not need to be made from a more practical fabric. You can use the same design to make more of a fancy or decorative 19th century apron by opting for silk or any other printed or bright colored fabric. The possibilities with this design are endless and beneficial for numerous applications. After gathering your materials, you will want to take your measurements. Begin by measuring your natural waist or the smallest part of your torso. You will want to take this measurement on top of all of the clothing you plan to wear below the apron, underpinnings included. Write that measurement down somewhere, then measure from the point of your natural waist to where you want the apron to end. I wanted it to end around my knees, so I decided upon that number. You can, of course, make a full-sized apron if desired, it's completely up to you. Essentially, the apron is constructed of two pieces, one waistband and one apron body. Since I didn't use a pattern, I wanted to make sure that you all had a clear visual representation presentation of how I cut the pieces, so I drew this diagram. It's available through a link in the description box for free as a download, so be sure to save this image for yourself so you can reference it later. For the apron body, the length will be the measurement you took from the point of your natural waist to where you want the apron to end, plus half an inch for the waist seam allowance and two inches for the hem allowance. The width of the apron body will end up being the width your fabric already naturally is from selvage to selvage, as you can see here in the diagram. The waistband length is the measurement of the circumference of your natural waist, plus one inch of seam allowance and one inch for overlap where the hooks and eyes will connect. The waistband width will be two and a half inches plus one half inch for seam allowance. Here you can see the same diagram with my own measurements plugged in. I have a 25 inch waist, so the apron waistband ended up being 25 inches plus one for seam allowance and one for overlap for a total of 27 inches. My measurement from waist to knee where I want the apron to end is 26 inches plus two inches for hem allowance and half an inch for seam allowance, making a total of 28 and a half inches. I should mention that if you are curvy, you can also use the same formulation, but depending on the width of your fabric, your cartridge pleats might not be as densely packed. For that reason, you may want to consider either having your apron cover 
less of the side body, or you can also connect two identical pieces of the apron body fabric at the center, so connecting two self edges together, which will then mean that there will be a center front seam running vertically. This center front seam will be somewhat obstructed by the volume from the pleats. If you do choose this option, just be sure to cut two apron body pieces instead of just one. Begin by marking and cutting out your fabric. I decided to cut the waistband first. Then I moved on to the apron body, marking the length at the 28.5 inch mark, which I decided upon earlier by plugging in my own measurements. The great thing about linen is once you start a small incision, you can actually just tear the fabric down a straight line. If you are using this method, just try to straighten out the edges of your fabric as much as possible. I would also not recommend this for many types of fabric. For example, don't do this with silk. This method primarily works with linen. As you can see here, the apron body length is the cut edge, while the width runs from self edge to self edge. You will want to use these self edges to your advantage. The apron is eventually going to gather in, like demonstrated here, to create body and volume. Next, mark one inch at the bottom edge of your apron body on the wrong side of your fabric. This is going to be the first fold of your apron's hem. Fold that one inch over onto the wrong side of the fabric and pin it in place along the entire length of the apron bottom edge. Try to keep the fold as straight as possible. Take your sewing needle and basting thread and run a basting stitch all along the fold. It'll end up looking something like this. Then fold over the same edge again, another one inch, creating a tube where the raw edge is concealed. Pin the double fold in place and stitch it down using a felling stitch, picking up just a thread or two of the fabric with each stitch so that the stitches are hardly visible on the right side of the fabric. Once this secure row of felling stitches is complete, go ahead and remove your basting thread. This is a very satisfying part. Move on now to the top edge of your apron body. Mark one quarter inch at the top edge on the wrong side of the fabric and fold over the edge one quarter inch. This is the edge that is perpendicular to the self edges. Pin this edge down securely and repeat the same steps as before. First basting down the fold, then folding the fold over again another quarter inch, encapsulating the raw edge. Pin the double fold down and sew it securely using felling stitches. Once done, satisfyingly remove the basting stitches. Now both your hem and waist edges are all secure and we can move on to the next step. At this point, you will want to get your tape measure once more and you will have to decide where on your side body you want your apron to start and to stop. I generally like an apron that covers a bit further back, but some individuals like when an apron just covers more of the front body. For my own apron, I decided on 16 inches starting and stopping at these points. Moving back to your fabric, tuck under the self edges to the wrong side of the fabric and pin them down. This will just help to secure them so they are tidy later on. Using a measuring tool or your tape measure, along the right side of the finished waistband edge of your apron body piece, mark a line every one half inch. This is where the stitches for your cartridge pleats will go. As you can see here, I accidentally skipped one here, so be sure to mark every one half inch and go down the entire width of the fabric from self edge to self edge. Make a mark about 1 8 of an inch from the edge of your fabric and another mark 1 inch down from that. This denotes where the two rows of your parallel stitches will go. Thread two sewing needles with long pieces of thread about the length of your entire width of fabric, not the end of your thread. Be sure that the knot is on the wrong side of your fabric so that the needle comes out from the right side of your fabric. And also make sure that your self edge is securely tucked under for neatness. Repeat the same process for the second threaded needle at the point one inch below the first threaded needle. One needle at a time, run your thread in and out of the fabric at each mark, similar to how you would run a gathering stitch. Once both threads have been threaded through the entire width of the apron body top edge, pull on the threads to begin gathering the fabric. This is also an extremely satisfying part. Tug on the fabric to keep the cartridge pleats tidy and even. The measurement you took earlier where you'd like the width of your apron to start and stop will now come into play. Lining the pleats up with a ruler, adjust the density until it matches the number you decided upon earlier. In my case, it's 16 inches, so I just kept adjusting until I reached that goal. Try on the apron body by placing it up to your body and see if you are happy with the result. If not, make adjustments. Once your adjustments are all made, knot the end of the two threads securely so that the cartridge pleats stay in place. Finally, we're 
moving on to the waistband, which is the second and final piece of the construction. Using an iron, press your waistband strip in half lengthwise, wrong sides to wrong sides. Then, iron under the seam allowances, which will be one quarter inch for each side. This will hide the raw edges inside of the waistband tube that you are now creating, like so. Measure your waistband and make sure it's the right length for your waist. Additionally, on the short end of the waistband, opening up the folds, tuck under the seam allowances as well to the wrong side. Secure this shut by sewing whip stitches and continue whip stitching the entire tube shut so that all raw edges are encapsulated inside of the waistband. Once complete, your waistband will look something like this. Wrap your completed waistband around your natural waist and make sure it all fits well. There should be about one half inch or more of overlap on each side where the hooks and eyes will meet. I ended up with about one inch for each side because I made my seam allowances slightly smaller. You can do the same, this will just offer a little more room to make any future alterations to the apron by moving the hooks and eyes back. Find the center front point of your waistband and mark it. Find the center front point of your cartridge pleated apron body and mark that as well. It's time now to attach the waistband to the apron body. Matching up the center front points, pin the wrong side of the waistband to the right side of the apron body. This ensures that the tops of the cartridge pleats will be hidden when the apron is seen from the right side. You will want to pin the apron body about one quarter to halfway up the waistband width so that some of the waistband is left alone and doesn't have cartridge pleats attached, like in this demonstration. There will be a point where each fold will meet the waistband and at those points you will want to place a pin. I would recommend pinning at every single dip in the fold. You're going to later sew each one down individually so this is the best for a clean finished look. This process is a bit time consuming but will be worth it. Once you're done pinning it will look something like this. Taking a threaded needle, you're going to whip stitch each cartridge pleat fold onto the waistband. For the salve edges, flatten them out slightly so that their edges lay flat on the wrong side of the fabric. Additionally, run your whip stitches between the two layers of the waistband so that the stitches aren't visible on the waistband from the right side. For the rest of the cartridge pleats, you will want them to keep their upright volume, so try to stitch them in a way that you don't squish them down. Once they are all stitched, they will look stunning and voluminous. Cartridge pleats are one of my favorite historical sewing techniques. You can see here they are all kept as upright as possible to retain height, and at the salve edge they are flattened down just to keep everything neat. You can see also how these stitches don't show on the right side of the waistband. I went ahead and folded under the edge of one of these salve edges again because it had a red line I didn't like. In order to keep both of the folded under salve edges completely secure, I am choosing to fell stitch both sides down, however you can skip this step if it doesn't bother you. Now we are going to mark the hooks and eyes. Wearing the apron, find out where the two sides meet and then mark that point on both sides of the waistband. Measure your waistband from one mark to the other and this measurement should match with your natural waist number. As you can see here, my measurement is 25 inches and so is the tape measure reading. Everything matches up. To ensure your hooks and eyes are on the correct side, place your apron down as if you are wearing it on your body and wrap the waistband around so that the marks on the edges meet. Imagine hooks being on one side and eyes on the other and visualize how they might connect. In my case, I decided to sew the two eyes on first to the right side of the right edge. Then I proceeded to sew on the two hooks on the wrong side of the left edge so that they would connect to the eyes when secured. Here are the eyes completely sewn on and here's how they fasten with the hooks. At long last, your adorable and simple Victorian apron is finally complete. This design has so many applications and is very versatile for all of your 19th century apron needs. Aprons are a beautiful way to accessorize any historical fashion or history bounding garment, and they can be immensely practical as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it easy to follow. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions and I shall do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on Thursday for another video.